Protesters at the Myanmar embassy in London, where on Wednesday night Ambassador Cho Shua Min was locked out, allegedly by his deputy and the military attaché. Last month, the ambassador, a former army colonel himself, had broken ranks, criticising the coup on February the 1st and calling for the release of the country's democratic leaders. In the morning, he returned and spoke to reporters outside. He said embassy staff were now taking orders from the military attaché. So is this then the formal reprisal of the military from your comments last month, do you think? Yes. The, the instruction from uh, the capital, uh, they are obeying uh, their orders as well. So this is their decision. He said his own options did not likely include returning to his country. Do you want me to you see get killed? You think you'll be killed kill if you go home? Who knows? In what may be one of his last journeys in an official diplomatic car, Cho Shuamin headed to a meeting at the UK's Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. In a statement, Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab had earlier said, we condemn the bullying actions of the Myanmar military regime in London yesterday and I pay tribute to Cho Shua Min for his courage. The UK continues to call for an end to the coup and the appalling violence and for a swift restoration of democracy. The British government has imposed sanctions on Myanmar military interests since the coup, but it's not clear what more can be done now. A Foreign Office spokesman said Myanmar's military authorities had given notice that they'd terminated the ambassador's position, a decision the government accepts. What is it you'd like the British government to do, sir? Open the doors? I'll kick them out? Yeah, yeah. Cho Shua Min says he considers himself still to be the ambassador here in London, but the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office does not. This country has a long-standing tradition of recognising states, not countries, and so it is the military in Myanmar that has authority over what happens inside this building. Jonah Hull, Al Jazeera, London.